We're looking at solving systems of equations with the two algebraic methods. The first method is substitution. Personally, I prefer substitution only when one of the coefficients uh, of the variables is a 1 so that I don't have to deal with fractions. So if we look at my two equations here, we have 3x plus 1y equals 5 and we have 1x minus 2y equals 4. So if I'm looking at these two equations, in my opinion, I have two options. Solve for the y in this first equation, or solve for the x in the second equation. So let's solve for x in the second equation. When I do that, I'm going to add 2y to both sides of the equation. So this tells me that x is equivalent to 4 plus 2y. Now this is the substitution method, so I'm going to take this equation, 4 plus 2y, and I'm going to substitute it into the first equation, because I didn't use that one yet. So I'm going to substitute x is equal to 4 plus 2y in for the x here. So I get 3 times x, which is equal to 4, at 4 plus 2y plus y equals 5. I distribute my 3, 12 plus 6y plus y equals 5. Combine my like terms, 12 plus 7y equals 5. Subtract 12 from both sides, 7y equals negative 7. Divide by 7, so y is equal to negative 1. Now the solution of a system of equations is an ordered pair, because remember it represents where the two lines cross on a coordinate plane. So now I need to find what y is equal to, or x is equal to, because I already have y here. So I have three options. I can plug it back into the first equation. I could plug it into the second equation. My personal favorite is to plug it in to the equation that's already solved for x. So when I do that, I get... 4 plus 2 times y, which is negative 1, is equal to x. So x equals 4 minus 2, x equals 2. So my ordered pair is 2 comma negative 1. Okay, so now I want you to pause the video and try the second equation, or a system of equations. Okay, now that you've had a chance to try it yourself, let's take the first equation and solve for y. y is equal to negative x minus 2. I'm going to substitute this in for the y here. So 2x minus negative x minus 2 equals 14. Negative distributes, so you get plus x plus 2. So that's 2x. Combine your like terms, 3x plus 2 equals 14. Subtract 2 from both sides. 3x equals 12. Divide by 3. And x is equal to 4. Plug that back in. y equals negative 4 um, minus 2. So y is equal to negative 6. So you should have gotten the solution for negative 6. Our second method for solving equations algebraically is the elimination or linear combination methods. We're going to multiply one or both of my equations. Sometimes I don't have to multiply any of them. Then combine them to eliminate one of the variables. So when I look at these two equations, x plus y equals 7, 5x plus 2y equals 10. I see that my coefficients on the first equation are both 1. So I have two options. I can multiply by a negative 5 so that the coefficients on the x are opposites, or I can multiply by a negative 2 so that the coefficients on the y are opposites. So let's multiply the top by negative 2, because I always prefer to multiply by smaller numbers. 
When I do that, negative 2 times x is negative 2x, negative 2 times y minus 2y, negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. Now I'm going to add my two equations together. When I do that, 5x minus 2y, or we get 3x equals negative 4 divided by 3, and x equals negative 4 thirds. Now I have to plug that back in to any of my equations to find out what y is. Now another option would be to do the elimination again and eliminate the x, but that's usually more work. So x plus y equals 7, so negative 4 thirds plus y is equal to 7. Add 4 thirds. y is equal to 7 plus 4 thirds. Now in order to add a whole number to a fraction, you could make your fraction right here into a mixed number. This is So we have 1 and 1 third plus 7 is 8 and 1 third. The other option is to take the 7, make it a fraction over 1, times by 3 over 3, so I get a common denominator, 21 thirds plus 4 thirds is 25 thirds. Same answer. So my ordered pair is negative four-thirds, comma, twenty-five thirds. Take a second to pause the video and do the second problem. Okay, now that you've had time to try this one, if you look at it, we've already set this equation up to where if I add them together exactly the way they are, the x's cancel. So I'm just going to add them like they are, the x's cancel, negative x plus x is 0, y plus 2y is 3y, 9 plus 6 is 15. Divide by 3, so y is equal to 5. I can plug that back in, 2x plus 2 times 5 equals 6. So I plugged it into the, first, the second equation, x plus 10 equals 6. Subtract 10 and x is negative 4, so your ordered pair is negative 4, comma, 5. Sometimes your equations require you to multiply both equations in order to get the coefficients to be opposites. The first equation, I have two options. I can get rid of the x by making them 6 and negative 6. I get rid of the y by making them 20 and negative 20. Again, I personally prefer smaller numbers, so I multiply by 2 for the top equation. That'll make it 6x and 3 on the bottom equation. So I get 6x plus 8y equals negative 2. And then a negative 6x minus 15y equals 30. My x's cancel, and negative 7y equals 28, divide by negative 7, and y is negative 4. You can plug that back in, 3x plus 4 times negative 4 equals negative 1. It doesn't matter which equation you choose, you should get the same y value. 3x minus 16 equals negative 1. Add 16 to both sides, 3x equals 15, so x equals 5. So your solution, 5 comma negative 4. So again, take a second to do the next problem, and we'll check our answer. So did you get negative 8 comma 7? Awesome. If you didn't, I want you to take this time to look through your work. This is, we make mistakes with negative signs. We 
we make mistakes not adding properly, not multiplying properly. So take a second to check through your work if you didn't get that answer. The last example is when it doesn't always look like it's ready to do linear combination or elimination. So you can rearrange the equations so that they line up. So I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to get the x and y on the same side. So I'm going to subtract x. When I do that, I get negative x plus 3y equals 4. Now I'm going to take the extra step and I'm going to write the first equation underneath it so I'm not trying to do addition over the uh, other work here. So I have 8x plus 3y equals negative 5. Now I've already got 3y as my coefficient, but one of them needs to be negative. So I need to multiply, let's say, my first equation by a negative 1. I get x minus 3y equals negative 4. My y's cancel out. 9x equals negative 9. So x is negative 1. Plug that back in. 3y equals negative 1 plus 4. 3y equals 3. So y equals a positive 1. My solution is negative 1, 1. Take a second. On this one, you're going to have to rearrange both equations so the x and the y's line up. So I would personally move the x to in front of this 2y, move the y behind that x. Take a second. Pause the video. Do it yourself. Okay, now I'm going to minus the 2x. And you get negative 6 equals negative 2x plus 2y. I'm going to subtract the 2y on this one. So I get negative 4 equals 3x minus 2y. And this is nicely set up so that we can cancel my y's. Let's cancel. Negative 10 equals x. So x is negative 10. Then we can plug that in. Let's do the second equation, 2 times negative 10 minus 6 equals 2y, negative 20 minus 6 equals 2y, divide by 2, negative 26 divided by 2, y equals negative 13. So my solution is negative 10, negative 13. And that's it.